You guys, we are doing it. I am kicking off the 2022 fall DIY season with a bang. I've got 25 amazing, adorable, and super affordable Dollar Tree DIYs that are all perfect for fall. This is Whiskey and Wit, my name is Whitney, and on this channel I love to share DIYs and budget home decor, so if you love that too and you're new here, be sure to hit subscribe down below so we can be craft buddies. I wanna give a huge thank you to Upside for sponsoring today's video. We'll talk more about them in a little bit, but first, let's get into the projects. Up First is a super easy Kirkland's dupe. They were selling these chalk paint pumpkins for 10 bucks last year. And so for this, you could use any pumpkins that you find at Dollar Tree. Here's some of the new ones this year. Or you can use, like I did, a pumpkin that you no longer like the look of. It's a nice way to update it. I sprayed the stem with some gold spray paint and don't worry if it gets kind of all around because you're just going to paint over it. And then I decided to dupe it exactly with the black matte look on the pumpkin, but you could do orange, you could do blues, greens, whatever color fits within your fall decor. I really like the matte look of these pumpkins and it's great to give old things new life. Or if you find some of the not so cute pumpkins at Dollar Tree, you can just easily make them over because usually the ugly ones are the last to go. Now I know we're kicking this off in July, but I like to get ahead of you guys so you know what to look for when the products hit your shelves at Dollar Tree. You may not be ready to DIY right now, but if the items are there, you're probably gonna wanna grab them because if not, they will be sold out when you're ready to craft. Know what you're looking for, grab it early, and then it's waiting for you when you're ready to DIY. Window clings are something that Dollar Tree is constantly coming out with each season. And so for this project, you're gonna wanna grab some window clings and any jar of your choice. Take the lid off and trace it on some fabric. You wanna give yourself about a one inch allowance all around the outside. Then take some hot glue, glue your lid down and tie the flaps down with some jute twine. Then you can be absolutely creative and take your window clings and apply them however you would like. Also remember that you can cut them down. They cut really easily if it won't fit your jar exactly. You could also honestly repurpose some jars that you have at home, whether that be pasta sauce or any other kind of jar. Just take the sticker off and you have some really fun jars that you can use for decor, you can use for organization. They would be cute for items on a coffee bar. The sky's the limit. These pumpkin pie slices had to be one of my favorite projects I did all of last year. To make this, you're gonna want a sponge from the auto section, and we're gonna start by using scissors to cut them into triangles. Once they're all cut, take some orange chalk paint, make sure to coat the entire triangle, and make sure you don't see any of that yellow seeping through. Now here's where the magic happens. You're gonna want some antiquing wax. This is Waverly's wax. And I put it on the top and as you can see on the right, it looks fresh from the oven. And then it's time to add some crust. So I used some burlap scrap that I had last year, but if I were to do these again, I would use some felt instead. It would be a little easier to work with, but you can use whatever you have on hand to look like crust. I wrapped it from the bottom to the back of my slice, and then I just did a little swervy cut here on a scrap piece to create the little scalloping on the top of my pie. And what would pumpkin pie be without whipped cream? We're gonna take some Dollar Tree spackling, add a little bit of white paint just to kind of thin it out and brighten it up. Stir it up with a spoon and then we're gonna scoop it once it's this kind of cool whip, whipped cream consistency into just a little Ziploc baggie. Cut a zigzag on the end and you've got a piping bag to add all of your whipped cream to your cute little pumpkin pies. The smaller ones were the perfect size for a garland, so I used a sharp, long dowel needle or upholstery needle to string them up, and then I filled out any of the openings between the slices with some scrap fabric. I just tied them on like little bows. You could use ribbon too, and here they are. These are so fun and festive. I love them so much. I think I'm gonna make some more this year because they are just so fun and so, so cute. I got a kick out of the saying last year and I decided to put it on a few different things. So to make this sign, I grabbed one of these mason jars, which they have out this year already. This is a clip from this year. And I started by peeling off the front as well as the little metal piece at the top of the mason jar. Sand it down and give it a good two coats of orange chalk paint. And then it's time to reassemble. So I used some hot glue to put the metal piece back on the top for my lid. And then I cut out on my Cricut, which this is a free cut file. I will link for you down in the description over on my blog that says the only thing getting lit this weekend are my fall scented candles. Basically just kind of poking fun at myself that I don't go out and have too much fun anymore because I have a little kid and I'm in bed by nine. So 
just a funny tongue-in-cheek sign that I enjoyed. I finished it off with some ribbon and this thing was ready to go right smack dab next to my fall scented candles. I also love this saying so much that I put it on a wood tag. A similar process, I just used my paper transfer tape to put it onto the wood, added some buffalo check ribbon after applying the decal, and these little tags are so fun. You can find them in the crafter score section. They also have circles as well, and it's just a fun little tiered tray piece. If you're loving these affordable Dollar Tree DIYs, I'm gonna assume that you like to save in other areas of your life as well. You have got to check out the Upside app. Upside is a free app that I've been loving lately to get cash back on my gas purchases, but it's also great for grocery purchases and if you like to dine out. And I found the app is super user friendly and easy to use. Just find your offer, then I'm gonna claim the one that I want and I'm gonna get 22 cents off per gallon. Now all that's left is to go get gas. Depending on the station, you'll either check in and pay as usual with a debit or credit card or you'll snap and submit your receipt to get paid and I can cash out any time in a ton of different ways, like direct deposit, PayPal, or I can opt for an e-gift card with brands like Amazon or some of my other favorites like Target, Starbucks, and Walmart. To get started, grab your phone and download the free Upside app on the Apple or Google Play Store. When signing up, be sure to use my promo code WIT right here and get five or more dollars cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. I'm gonna save up my cash back to then use it to help furnish our home. We close on it so, so soon and I cannot wait to share with you. This is another one that I wanna make more of this year and it is this easy sweater pumpkin. It starts with one of these orange foam pumpkins that they have every year and I started by taking off the stem and cutting a hole in the top. It cuts with a serrated knife just from your kitchen. Then I'm using some chalk paint to cover it all in white and make sure you're using like a paint on paint instead of a spray paint because it will eat through your foam. Then I'm using a chunky yarn. I found this at Dollar Tree as well, but you could use whatever yarn you have on hand. And I started by cutting pieces about 18 inches and then I realized it was a little too long. So I would say cut your pieces about 12 inches. I tied a knot and then separated my six pieces into three groups and just did a standard braid down the side. Again, you can do whatever texture you would like here. Then I realized I needed a matching hole at the bottom of my pumpkin, so I cut that out and then started to glue. Start at the top and add some glue, stick your knot in there, and then you're gonna wrap it around your pumpkin using some hot glue to hook it as you go. And I also kind of fluffed up my little pieces of braids so that they were a little bit fuller and I didn't have to braid as many pieces. You're still gonna get the full coverage, but it's gonna look more chunky, knit, like a sweater. I continued around the outside and then used some scrap pieces with hot glue to stick them in in case there were any openings added a cute little burlap leaf also from Dollar Tree, and then a cut little piece of stick that I found in my yard, free 99. This thing is so cute. I wanna make a bunch of these in different colors. I think it'd be so cute in like a deep red. Another Kirkland's dupe coming at you for project number six. I love this monogram sign, but not 30 bucks worth. So I grabbed one of these happy harvest signs, brought it home and removed the little star removed the hanger, and then took some Waverly antique wax and applied it to the back. This is going to give my MDF just like a little bit of a wood texture, and after I applied it, I wiped off any of the excess. After it dried, I took some painter's tape, taped it right about center, and painted the bottom white to get a similar look to our inspo. I let it dry about 75% of the way and then peeled my painter's tape off carefully to reveal my two-tone pumpkin. Then to add our monogram, I just printed out the letter C on my printer, but you could also do a Cricut decal. This is just a great way if you don't have a Cricut or don't wanna break it out, you can trace it on with some tracing paper, or you can go ahead and scribble on the back with some lead pencil, and then that will act as like a faux transfer. To then let you paint it in, I painted this leaf a little lighter green, again, to match the inspo, added it back to my sign as well as the hanger and some orange ribbon to give it a little pop of the traditional fall color. And this thing was ready to go. I'll take a dollar makeover over a $30 sign any day and this year $1.25 because it's the $1.25 tree now. Another option with the two-tone look is to use these wood shapes. They've got a variation of them every year. I grabbed a leaf as well as a pumpkin and started by staining both of them in dark walnut. You could paint them, you could stain them, whatever color that you want. 
and these pumpkins are kind of thick in the front but you could always use the backs of signs i like to do that a lot more than i use the fronts then we're going to do the same trick we did with that monogram sign put down your painter's tape i'm painting the bottom of the leaf white i could have done like a deep red there too and then i'm painting the bottom of the pumpkin orange peeling off that painter's tape and then once everything's dry i have these two free cut files again over on my blog that says hey there pumpkin and also autumn leaves i use that line between the two colors to kind of line up my black fonts and applied it with my paper transfer tape you could easily trace something like this with some graphite paper using my file if you don't have a cricut these are super fun statement pieces that won't take you very long to make This sign has to be one of my favorite Dollar Tree ones I have ever made just because I like the 3D element of it. I started with this child milestone sign and I did see some of them now. They kind of go in the back to school section. I painted the entire back with black chalk paint just to make sure everything was covered. And then I took some of these leaf cutouts they have every year at Dollar Tree and filled the holes of all the leaves that I needed. So then that way it looked like one piece instead of like an ornament. Then I went through with some dark walnut stain. Again, you could paint them whatever, but I just love the chalkboard look with the dark wood. And then I cut out this saying, which I saw on a different sign on Etsy and I knew I wanted to put it on this sign. After I applied it to the center with my paper transfer tape as to not rip up any of that paint I just applied, then I started to lay out my leaves as if they were falling from the top. I had one last leaf that I wanted to do a cool effect with, so I marked it and cut it in half with my miter box, I guess a quarter to three quarters. But then as you can see here, I could have it look like they were coming on and off the sign. You could also probably use some tin snips or some miter shears to cut it as well. It's pretty thin wood. But once everything is glued down, you have a really pretty high-end looking sign from Dollar Tree. I absolutely love it and I think the message is great too. Every year I'm a sucker for fabric pumpkins. I have a million of these and I keep making them just because they're so easy and so cute. They're fun to fill trays and a lot of different things. So from Dollar Tree, you wanna grab their fabric and then you can lay it out and trace a large round object. I'm doing a pizza pan here, but the larger the pan, the larger the pumpkin, the smaller the circle, like a coffee mug, etc. they're gonna be little. We're gonna start with a needle and thread and I would suggest using yarn instead of thread actually here. You'll see in a second I switch, but you're gonna go in and out around the outside to essentially create like a cinch bag. So as you're going in and out, in and out, you're able to cinch everything back. And once you get all the way around, you can add some stuffing, cotton balls, whatever you have on hand, an old pillow and scrunch it all the way to tie it. It's starting to look like a pumpkin here. Then we're gonna take our dowel needle and create some grooves. Take your thread and tie a hole on the end. Go down through the top and out the bottom. That way the little knot is going to catch. And then you're able to continue to go around your pumpkin. Do as many or as little as you want just to get the grooves of a pumpkin. And then once that's done, tie it off. And we're gonna add just a little twig that I'm cutting with my miter shears. These things are great from Amazon. They cut just about everything. They're super strong. And then I'm curling up some wire jute twine and I'm gonna finish off with some additional accessories like some little burlap leaves that I just cut freehand from some Dollar Tree ribbon. I have a ton of different sizes of these. You could do a ton of different colors. Dollar Tree is upping their selection of fabrics so you could absolutely do this all Dollar Tree plus free 99 with a stem from your yard. And if you don't have trees in your yard or you live in like an apartment or something, just go on a walk and find some on the sidewalk. I don't usually do a ton of wreaths on my channel, but I like to do a couple each season so I have them for my door. And I love to buy these big wreath forms at Dollar Tree because for $1.25, they're a great deal. I grabbed some of these muted florals. They've got so many pretty colors this year, as well as the circle Hello Autumn sign and I liked how it fit directly in there. Now, if you can't find that, you could do something similar like this from this year and you can cut it apart and glue it down. Now, because I was going with the lighter muted florals, I wanted to spray paint my wreath form a beige color. And then I used my miter shears to cut apart four different sprigs of the leaves. I'm tying three pieces together with some jute twine. I'm just wrapping it around the center to create little bunches. And then I'm taking more jute twine to tie it directly onto the wreath form. That allows me to kind of figure out where I want everything to sit. 
and it gives me a little bit more freedom than just taking the whole sprig the way Dollar Tree sells it with like six pieces and just sticking it on there. It gets a little fuller of a look. Then I twisted up some burlap to create a nice little ribbon for the corner, cut the ends, and this guy was ready to go. Now I just hung the sign behind the wreath. It's not hooked together. I figured then that way I could swipe it out if I wanted to or if I just wanted to use the Hello Autumn sign, I could get more bang for my buck there, but super easy and cute. Looks like you bought it at a boutique, not Dollar Tree. Hey friend, I'm hopping in to make sure you are enjoying these fall DIYs and also to ask you to leave me a comment if you are still with me. Let me know what you are most looking forward to about fall. I would love to read that and I read all of my comments. So every time you get a heart or a response back, that comes from me, nobody does it for me and I love interacting with you guys. So leave me a comment, I would love to hear from you. You guys know I am a sucker for seasonal pillows and these were a, another Kirkland's dupe that I love the look of it, but $35 for a pillow is just way outside of my realm. I like to keep it classy, but keep it cheap. So I'm grabbing some more Dollar Tree fabric and this fabric I actually used was left over from Hobby Lobby, but you could absolutely use the Dollar Tree ones. You're probably just going to need two of those little fat quarter rolls. You could also use Walmart fabric as well. This is just for inspiration. We're gonna cut them into squares and glue around the outside, leaving just a little bit of a hole so that we can stuff our pillows. The hole just needs to be big enough so your hand can go in. Then I flipped it inside out so you have kind of faux seams. And if you're a sewer, by all means, sew it. I am not a sewer, the Gorilla Glue holds really great. Now for my original project, I used a burlap drop cloth, but you could grab one of these bags from Dollar Tree and get the same effect. I just cut down my drop cloth or you could use the bag. I cut it to a size that was slightly smaller than my pillow so it gave me a border. And then on the ends, I just pulled off some of the strings to kind of get it to start to fray. Then I've got a couple different free cut files like this pumpkin and the farmer's market one that's over on my blog. I cut them out to size, I believe they were 11 inches wide. I applied them with my heat press, so 325 degrees, 320 around there and then I like to do 20 to 30 seconds, let it cool, peel it off, and then we're going to apply it to our pillow. Now the reason that I didn't glue it down and then apply it to the pillow is because you don't wanna put your heat press over the top of your glue because that's just a recipe for disaster. So glue your decal or your heat transfer vinyl onto the burlap and then glue it onto your pillow. I also did this one, which was farmer's market with the black and white check, which I really like. It looks just like the inspo. Add some glue around the outside, stuff it, seal it, and you are good to go. You could also do the same thought process with Dollar Tree placemats, or if you find some cute napkins as well. I just really like to make cheap throw pillows like this, and it's fine if you get sick of them for the next year because you can just take the stuffing out and make another DIY. That's what I do. Now, if you've been around a while, you know I used to go hog wild for Buffalo Check. I still love it, but I needed to tone it back just a little bit because I went a little too crazy. So for this sign, you're gonna need a tag sign. I use these summer ones, but you could also grab these that are in the nautical section. Dollar Tree always has some form or variation of tags. You just want two that are similar size. They don't even have to be exactly the same. We're gonna start by removing the hanger and then peeling off this little front. Their signs, especially without glitter, are able to be peeled off pretty easily. And I like to do that so in case you put it on a door, you can't really see through the window that you've got like a back that looks wonky. Now this truck is from their calendars last year, but I just found some calendars for the next year. So for 2023, so they do have the calendars out. So you can keep an eye out for them or you can use a printable, whatever works for you. I'm tracing the area where the printable is going to go. So I only have to paint the Buffalo check at the top of the sign. So I'm gonna do one tag fully in white for the base of my Buffalo check. And the other one I'm gonna do about half. Now it's time to paint Buffalo Check. It's been a minute, but I love this technique. We're gonna do vertical lines with one inch painter's tape and I'm using just a little small piece of tape to act as a spacer to make sure everything is evenly spaced. Then I'm taking some orange paint and mixing it with white because I want a lighter color for my stripes. I'm getting to the color that I want and then I'm gonna paint those vertical stripes. You want to make sure all of your painter's tape is pushed all the way down just so you get nice, clean, crisp lines. Then when that's dry, peel it off. And then we're going to do the same thing, but horizontally. Put a piece of painter's tape down, use your spacer, another piece of tape, spacer, so on and so forth until you get to the end. 
Then you're gonna paint those stripes again with that same orange color you just mixed. Now before we paint, I like to mark where the orange is underneath and that is gonna help you here in a minute because it's gonna tell you where to put your painter's tape back to get the buffalo check technique. So once those horizontal stripes are dry, we're taking the painter's tape we removed from the vertical stripes and putting it where we put those X's. So as you see here, it just tells you where to put your tape back so you can line it up. And then that way when we're doing our darker color orange squares, it's gonna line up right where the lines intersect. So I'm going through with just that full octane orange. You remember I mixed it with white before and I'm painting all of the squares that are visible. Then when it's about halfway dry, I'm just peeling it off to reveal this beautiful buffalo check. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but just to the top of the sign. It didn't make any sense for me to paint the entire thing when I knew I was gonna cover up the bottom with a printable. I also don't want the buffalo check showing through. So for this round, I'm doing horizontal in a gray. So we're gonna do gray and black versus light orange and dark orange. Doing my vertical stripes here, painting those, but not before I mark. Replacing my tape, doing the black, and then peeling it off. Then I just needed to measure. I'm just using the side of my sign to crease it and then cut this little piece of calendar so that I can apply it right to my sign. I ended up using Mod Podge, but usually now I like to use double-sided tape. It makes it so everything's gonna stick for you and just outline the whole area, but you're not gonna get any crinkles or bubbling. So I would recommend using double-sided tape. Dollar Tree now sells the Scotch brand, which I absolutely love, so just FYI. Then to finish it off, I just made a cute little bow and I glued the two tags together kind of at an angle, added some new jute twine to hang both of them together, and this thing was ready to go. It looks really great on a eucalyptus wreath. I love the pumpkins, the black truck. And if you're looking for something else to put there, if you don't have the calendar, I've got a ton of printables on my blog. You can head down to the description and find them. Here's a couple bam, bam, really easy Cricut projects that will make a huge impact. First being these custom pillar candles. Head to the candle aisle and grab yourself whatever color you're feeling. One of these pillar candles, you can do multiple colors. I decided to do white here. I'm cleaning it off with some rubbing alcohol because there was a little leftover of the sticky. I'm cutting out this in the skinny and I'm just measuring how high my candle is, subtracting an inch, applying it, and then wrapping it with some jute twine quick and easy and I always get compliments on these. I have these across the board for a ton of different holidays and if you're not into Ray Dunn, just pick a different font and it would still look modern and cool without being Ray Dunn-esque. Another quick way to use your Cricut for fall Dollar Tree decor is to make these appetizer plates. Now they've got square ones as well as these circle ones and today I am working with the square one. I just measured across and cut out the word thankful in the font Samantha. It's a free font over on Defont. And then I applied it with just some regular transfer tape and it was ready to go. I get questions on these. I don't use them for food. They are strictly for decor, but they are beautiful. And to have seasonal plates for only $1.25 each is awesome. This guy was my first foray into Dollar Tree pizza pan wreath signs, and these are so fun. I start by taking my pizza pan from Dollar Tree and spraying it with some black matte spray paint. That's gonna give it that nice, cool chalkboard look. Then this is a file I designed. It's Farm Fresh Pumpkins, pick your own. And I had a slight issue with the curvature, so I ended up having to trim it, and you'll see what I mean here in a second. I added my paper transfer tape just because I did not want any chance of peeling up that spray paint. It's a low tack transfer tape. I talk about it until I'm blue in the face because I really do love it. I bought it on a whim years ago and I use it all the time. So I lined this up and decided I needed to trim off the bottom just to help with applying it. And that's another tip. You can always cut your transfer tape and apply it in a different way. So don't worry if you don't get everything in one swoop. I know I don't do that every time. Once I completed my operation to get my sign all put together, I took some hot glue on the back and created just two little pools of hot glue, added some jute twine, and then added some more hot glue on the top. This is the best way that I like to add hangers to the back of signs. And if it's gonna go on something you think it's gonna scratch, just add a little piece of felt and you'll be good to go. I love this in my lamb's ear wreath. The tobacco basket on the outside came from Hobby Lobby, same with the wreaths. And I really like the matte look. It would be cute with pumpkins around the outside too but this got me hooked on Dollar Tree pizza pan signs. 
I really like farmhouse bead strands, but this is a fun take on that in a different direction. I grabbed some of these create your own ornaments as well as pearl beads. Now Dollar Tree now sells just pearls and pearl beads. So you wanna make sure that you get the ones with the holes in it because you won't be able to string them if they're just the pearls. String up as many as you want. I'm just using a dowel needle here to make sure everything gets strung up. And then I'm tying my little ornaments on the end that I had just stained with some dark walnut stain. You could paint them, you could add a decal, all the things. Then I'm taking some more of that yarn that I strung it up on and wrapping it around my hand 40 to 50 times. The more you do it, the thicker your little tassel is gonna be. Then I cut it and tied a knot at the top so that I've got this little like circle here. It's hard to explain, but you see what I'm doing. Then I'm tying off the head of the tassel with just a scrap piece of yarn. And then you're gonna trim the ends to give you all your little wispies for your tassel. You can give them a haircut if need be, and then you can go ahead and tie it on to the end. On some of them, I added some cute little ribbon, like buffalo check, just either glued them onto the pumpkin or put them directly onto the bead strand. These things are quick and easy to put together and it's a fun take. It kind of veers a little bit towards rustic glam as well. So some different options for you to make decor your own or make them a little bit different than what's super trendy. I love these and they feel kind of timeless to me as well, which is always nice. For number 17, I just wanted to remind you that I have a ton of printable files, different artwork pieces for fall over on my blog. And here are some of the different ways you can use them other than just putting them into a frame. First being doing a wood frame hack. So you're gonna wanna grab a Dollar Tree canvas and it doesn't matter what size, you can do the five by seven, eight by 10. You just wanna make sure it has a thick side like this because that means there's a wood frame inside. Once you get it home, take a flathead screwdriver and pop up the little staples and use some pliers to get them out of there. You want to release the canvas. Take the canvas, put it to the side, and then sand down your frame. They're kind of rough usually, so you just want to make sure that you don't get any splinters. Then for this one, I'm doing a little bit of water and black acrylic paint to make a faux stain, but you could actually stain it, paint it, whatever floats your boat here, and let it dry. Once it's dry, you're gonna want a printable printed to the size of your canvas, so five by seven or eight by 10. And then I trace my frame on top of some scrap Dollar Tree foam board to make a thicker back that would stand up a little bit. Mark and cut your printable to the size of your foam core. Adhere it to the foam board. I'm using a glue stick here, but you could use double-sided tape as well. And then with some hot glue, hook the foam board to the frame. Then you've got a nice little wood sign that looks super trendy and cute, quick and easy to put together and you could customize it to whatever kind of decor you have. Another way to use my printables is to make some magnets. So I have some that are in the square size, so I cut them to four by four, trimmed them down with my little slice cutter, and then it was time to make them into magnets. So I traced those onto some foam board used my little rotary cutter to cut out the squares. You could also use an X-Acto knife. Now to protect the paper, especially if it's going on a fridge, I use some extra laminate sheets here, but you could just use packing tape. It will work the same. You just wanna add a protective coating to the front of it so that in case water gets splashed or something, your ink is not gonna run. Then your last step to take it from a little sign to a magnet is to grab one of these two options from Dollar Tree and just use some hot glue to stick it to the back. Voila, easy enough. You could also do this with photos. You could print those out in a square. Tons of different options, but these are so cute, fun and festive for your fridge. Add a little fun to your kitchen. Another fun way to use printables is this fun recipe sign. So I have an apple pie and a pumpkin pie printable, and I decided to add it to this thinking of a master plan sign. It's one of my favorites that Dollar Tree sells. I started by taking some scrap orange fabric because I thought it fit the pumpkin pie theme really well and trimmed it down to give myself some excess around the sign. Then with a thick coat of Mod Podge, I put it down and started kind of decoupaging the fabric to my sign. Once I got the whole front applied, then I flipped it over, cut some slits, and acted like I was wrapping it like I was wrapping a present and using Mod Podge to hook it down throughout the way. Don't be afraid to cut any slits so things will sit down nicely and then put that to the side and dry. 
Then I printed out my printable on my HP DeskJet, which is a great printer if you don't have one and you're looking for an affordable option. I got mine at Target. I cut mine down to the 5x7 and put it into a Dollar Tree frame. Any frame you have will do. I popped off the back, added some hot glue, and glued it directly onto my sign. And then I've got a fun little framed recipe. This is cute for a dining room, a kitchen, and you could also just put your photo of your family at the pumpkin patch in there. That would be super cute as well. Tons of options. It would not be a seasonal kickoff whiskey and what video if we didn't have some arrows in here. I did this locally grown pumpkins one last year and I absolutely love it. It is this reception sign painted white and then we just use our black matte vinyl to apply the wording. At this point, I probably have well over a dozen options for these arrows for different seasons. So many of you tell me that you have stocked up on these, so then that way you're ready when I have a new one come out. So I've got enough for fall, Halloween, and Christmas this year, so be ready. <laughs> then I applied it with my paper transfer tape and it was good to go. I love the white. You could do a black paint with a white look if you want as well with the pumpkins or you could opt for a Halloween one. I also did this world famous Sanderson apothecary in a video last year. Got a full Hocus Pocus video. Got like 20 DIYs in one video for you. So check that out as well. Another modern pumpkin comes in at number 22. This is also a Kirkland's dupe. I grabbed some of this thick floral wire in the floral section and took the loop and just kind of spread it out like a slinky here. I took the end and wrapped it around the center so it would stay put on me and it looks like kind of an abstract pumpkin. I took some extra of the wire and wrapped it around a pencil to create a little curly cue stem and then I spray painted all of my different sizes with just some flat black spray paint to give it that really modern look. I really like that they are a different shape than my other pumpkins. It adds some nice texture and dimension to vignettes. It's something fun and different to incorporate into your decor. One of my favorite things to do with my Cricut is customize things to have our family's name on them. And this sign is no exception. I grabbed an unfinished wood pumpkin. You could do whatever size works for you and I ended up staining it. If you can't find these, you could also grab one of their signs and just paint it as well. Just use whatever you can find in a pumpkin shape. Then I'm using their wood pumpkin cutouts, filling the hole of four of them because there's four of us in our family, if you count our dog Sebastian. And you just apply that wood filler, let it dry and then sand it down flat and then you can paint right over the top. I painted all four of them orange, and then I used some white vinyl to add our names to all of those, as well as this welcome to our little pumpkin patch, which is another free file that I have over on my blog. I used some hot glue to glue all of our names down, and then I used some tumbling tower blocks to glue to the back of the sign to allow it to grip to this little holder. It's just an extra paint stir stick I stained so that it would sit up on its own. I made another one that was more of a hanger to go on a wreath and this one I wanted to stand alone so I glued it on so it would sit up and it is a great shelf sitter and it's nice too because you could also add pumpkins up top so if you have an expanding family there's options there. Number 24 was one of your guys' favorites from my Cricut video last year. It is this hot pad trivet. I grabbed a circular one and removed the little kind of jelly protectors from the bottom, measured it across, realized it was eight inches and cut this file. I also designed to eight inches on some orange vinyl. Now I cut it with the mirrored setting on so I could apply it to the underside. So I'm just adding my transfer tape here, peeling back the backer and sitting it right on the table. So it helped me line it up. Then I squeegeed it down, peeled back my transfer tape, and decided to seal it with a coat of Mod Podge just to have everything sit down. You want to give it a good coat, but you don't want it to be too thick because you don't want it to get under your vinyl. Once it was dry, as you can see here, it dried clear, and then I'm just using the dots on the sides to add back our little protective pieces. So then that way, if you set it on a table, it won't scratch.
and you have made it with me to project 25. Now, if you have watched my videos for some time now, you know that I like to end my Cricut blank videos with a fun t-shirt. And so I ended up using that file. The only thing getting lit this weekend are my fall scented candles and put it on this shirt. I used a screen printing technique and I've got a full video. So if you've got a Cricut and want to learn how to screen print, you can do that. I will teach you how to do it. I will link all the supplies, all of that fun stuff. But it's always worth sharing because I feel like a lot of people don't realize you can screen print with your Cricut and it is a fun thing to do once you get the startup kit which is like 35 40 bucks so it's not five bucks off the rip but for how many t-shirts i've been able to make for a dollar 25 versus buying it is a huge huge money saver i can't wait to break this out again it might be a little too hot right now in july but come august this thing is coming out and so are my candles that's gonna do it for this video. As always, let me know down in the comments your favorite project in today's video. A huge thank you to Upside for partnering with me on this video and supporting Whiskey and Wit. Be sure to head to your app store, whether that be Apple or Google Play, to download Upside for free. Be sure to enter the code WIT for $5 or more back on your first purchase of $10 or more when you use the Upside app. Thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to share with you what I have in store for fall 2022. I'll see you next time. Bye.